be, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. Alleluia. saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. He got up and followed him. While he was at table at his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. About five years ago, when I was still living in Noblesville as a priest there, I was having a, a conversation with a parishioner and a friend, and she was encouraging me to listen to a new song that I'd never heard before. And I didn't know the song, I wasn't familiar with it, and I asked her who sang it, and she said, Lady Gaga. Some of you might not know who Lady Gaga is. Lady Gaga was basically a very famous singer uh, that came to fame about 15 years ago. And she was basically a very, I don't know how you would describe it, uh, kind of a, a person of ill repute, right? Uh, is basically uh, how she carried herself. And so when this prisoner, um, she told me I need to listen to the song, I was like, oh my gosh, I hate her, right? I'm not gonna listen to that music. And of course, shortly thereafter, right, she said, no, you have to give it a listen. You have to, you have to recognize, right, that her music is different now. And I listened to it, and the song was really good, and then I began to actually do some research, and I actually learned that Lady Gaga had actually uh, begun to return to Mass. She was actually, uh, she grew up in New York, and she was raised in a Catholic household, and she had actually started attending Mass as she got older, and she had posted things on her social media uh, platforms, and people had basically criticized her because of the way that she lived, and right? how could she be uh, claiming to be a Christian and a Catholic? And it was very striking, the way she defended herself. She said, God came not to call the righteous, but sinners. And as Pope Francis says, right, coming to Mass, receiving communion, communion is not food for the perfect, but it is medicine for sinners. And I was really struck by the whole discovery, realizing that even as a priest, I had basically just labeled another human being as someone on the outside, someone who was irredeemable, someone for whom it would be impossible for them to experience a conversion. And I haven't been keeping tabs on her recently, and I don't really know what the, what the story is now, but it was an enlightening experience for me that even celebrities, Nobody is ever too far gone to experience conversion. Many of you know that my, my brother uh, is in the seminary. And it really wasn't until around that same time, five or six years ago, that he actually uh, returned to the church. He was baptized, went through First Communion, and then left the church when he was in high school and really uh, was away for all of his adult life until just a few years ago. He finally returned to the church. So all those years as I was in seminary, he was a critic of the church, critic of the faith. And there were many times I felt like oh, he's never going to come back. And sure enough, here he is today, not only back in the church, but in the seminary. When we read about the life of St. Matthew, I'm sure many of his contemporaries thought the same about him. He's a tax collector. He robs people. He is a traitor to the Jews. 
And yet he, when Christ called him, had his conversion moment. He changed. And remained a sinner, but became a sinner striving to be a saint. We must never lose hope in the people around us. Nobody is ever too far gone. We never know when God might bring about a conversion in them. Every conversion is an act of God. It's a miracle. St. Augustine famously said that every converted soul is a greater miracle than the creation of the whole world. It's a greater miracle because every soul will outlast the world. And so by saving a soul for eternity, it's an even greater miracle than the creation of the world. But it's a miracle. Every one of us here in this church this morning, God has done something within us to preserve us and keep us, and bring about a conversion in us. I also think it's striking that when Jesus called Matthew, he simply said, follow me. He didn't give him a sales pitch. He didn't try to guilt him. He simply gave the invitation. And I think that is significant for us. That many of us, when we think about people who are not Christians or who are not Catholics, right, we, we go out of our way to try to convince them, to try to convert them right, and bring them back. And in my experience, that's the very thing that ends up turning people away. Typically, a much better strategy is simply to be strong in your faith and be proud of it and be convicted. And people can't help but see that in you. And I noticed this on the, on the, uh, on the, in the podcast world. You know, I've told you guys about this before, right, about how one of my favorite commentators right, is Michael Knowles. And he's a, he's a political commentator, but really he's more of a cultural commentator. And it's amazing how many people week after week are writing him letters just simply because he is regularly talking about Catholicism. He doesn't apologize for it. And he doesn't try to convince people that it's true. He just simply acts as if it is true. And every single week, people are writing him. And I'm thinking about becoming Catholic. It's simply because of his conviction. He doesn't apologize for it. He's not ashamed of it. And I imagine it was a similar experience for Matthew seeing Jesus with his followers. It wasn't that Jesus had to convince him. It was that Matthew couldn't help but notice the movement that was taking place in front of him and intrigued. Why were these men giving up everything to follow this man? So never underestimate the ability of God to bring about a conversion in souls that seem lost. And also never underestimate the power of your conviction. If we can just simply be fully committed and convicted Catholics, we never know how much that will impact the people around us. How many converted souls will follow in our wake for our conversions and our convictions.